how's your attitude? How do you intend to move forward in the day? Do you expect the day to dictate how you feel? Is that what's going on? Are you going into today already worried about, oh, that's going to happen. Oh, 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 that might happen. Is that how you're going forward in your life? <laughs> this is a test. Or, optionally, do you look at the day as a magnificent instantiation constantly happening for you to experience every manner of manifestation that you can experience. Take in stride those moments that are amazing and spectacular and those moments that aren't so amazing and spectacular, they're still amazing. They, those moments might need more nurturing, more love, more understanding, more compassion. It's all amazing. Okay. What would you suggest then? I'm all ears. That sounds amazing. Let's try that. Attitude and intent. Namo myoho renge kyo. Thank you. Thank you for your practice. Thank you for supporting this effort, this resource. The videos, the podcast, the website, the books, the mandala. Thank you. Patrons. Brilliant cause makers. Like, subscribe. Please do it while you're thinking about it. Helps to grow our Sangha. It's a little bit of Bodhisattva work. Never hurt anyone. <laughs> All right. We come to the last letter included in this book. It's not the last letter by any means, but it's the last one, the ultimate... Go show. I don't know why it's the last one. It just worked out that way. It's a brief one. It's actually from another Go show, a much more lengthy one. And interestingly enough, we just got, uh, we just finished. Uh, the last letter was about, well, to a young man, about the story of King Rinda. Yeah. And in that story, we talked about the white horses and the white swans, right? So this, this, uh, this little chunk of a sutra, or a sutra, a uh, gosho, just has some interesting words about what this book is about, the profound meaning of the Daimoku. And so it's a short section from the Go Show, White Horses and White Swans. And let's get into it. The word Namu expresses feelings of reverence and a sense of compliance. Right? There's these two, there's twofold meaning, two characters, Namu. That's why we don't skip those when we chant. Namu, Myoho Renge Kyo. Right? If you're going to start skipping them, then, well, one might say, why bother? Or just say, Namyo, and you're done. <laughs> it's just, come on. How easy does it have to be? Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. Seven characters, seven sounds, rhythm. The word Namu expresses feelings of reverence, respect, 
and a sense of compliance. I'm ready. I'm doing this. Hmm? Therefore, the Venerable Ananda placed Namu above the two characters, meaning this, of this is what I heard, which he wrote at the beginning of all the sutras. The great teacher Nanhui employed the words Namu, Myoho Renge Kyo, and the great teacher Tendai, the words Keishu Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. Also, the sage known as the great teacher Tendai Chiche wrote about the five characters, Myoho Renge Kyo, in the ten volumes and thousand pages of his work, The Profound Meaning of the Lotus Sutra. The gist of this work is that the 80 volumes or 60 volumes or 40 volumes of the Flower Garland Sutra, depends on the translation that you, what it inculcates under the, the umbrella term of the Flower Garland Sutra, the several hundred volumes of the Agama Sutras, the scores of volumes of the Correct and Equal Great Collection Sutra, the 40 volumes or 600 volumes of the Larger Wisdom Sutras, the 40 volumes or 36 volumes of the Nirvana Sutra, and all the countless sutras in India, in the palaces of the Dragon King, in the heavens, and in the worlds of the Ten Directions, are as numerous as the dust particles of the land, are all servants and followers of the single character Kyo, or Sutra, of Myoho Renge Kyo. And that's it. In these uh, over 30 past videos, we've covered every <clears throat> go show that I've collected. There are others, but these are specific to the Daimoku. We've learned Myo, we've learned Renge, we've learned Ho, and we've learned Kyo, repeated from different perspectives. Namu. In Nichiren's own words and in his quotations from other great previous Bodhisattva teachers, the significance of Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. So, for your own practice, for your own edification, for your own, uh, how shall I say it, removal of doubt, <clears throat> your conviction, your confidence, which is tremendous, tremendously important to our our efficacy, our instantiation of Buddhaness via our chanting of Namo Myoho Renge Kyo. Yes? But also, critically, in our efforts to answer questions from people who will undoubtedly, because of our life condition, be attracted, be curious, ask questions, want to know more about what it is that we do, or more specifically, what is that Buddhism you practice? What's that about? The moment most people that I've encountered learn about chanting, right away they're confronted with, eh. Or they'll just jump into it because they're accustomed via other ideas and religions and 
politics, to accept magical thinking. They'll just jump into it from that perspective. But it's important for us, it's incumbent upon us as emulators of Nichiren, practitioners of Shakyamuni's self-actualizing, self-realizing, self-manifesting Buddhaness, awakening, that we guide not only ourselves, but those who are looking to us to help them along their path to understand the significance, the depth of what this Daimoku is about. We're not just simply singing. We're invoking with a song our Buddhaness. Amazingly efficient. Amazingly immediate. But always requiring our attention, our intrinsic knowledge that what we're actuating is it reverberates throughout the entire engine of life. And the only way to inculcate that knowledge in somebody who doesn't know, who's ignorant, is to inform them. So the reason I put this book together wasn't to demonstrate how wonderful I am or what the resources are, but it's a tool. It's a tool to help all of us have some a go-to volume to say, oh, you want to talk about chanting? You want to talk about what that's about? Well, let's chant, first off, first thing. Let's chant for a few minutes. And let's, you know, I'll make some tea or whatever. We'll sit down, we'll relax. And uh, we'll read some of the what Nietzsche has to say about what this means. And, you know, we might read an entire letter or we might read a sentence. It will spark discussions and we could look to Nietzsche's perspective and his definitions, quote unquote, of what does this mean? What does it say, quote unquote? What is it that we're actuating, what we're doing with these characters not so much words anymore but representatives of ideas momentum engagement with the engine of life that's what we're doing okay so that's a brief one but that completes this series, and now the work is upon me again to decide what the next series of videos will be. Uh, I have a book here that was given to me by one of you. Uh, it's intriguing. It's full of cultural bias and terrible wording because of that cultural bias. But at the same time, this is an older Japanese Buddhist Tetsujo Kubota, translated by Hamilton Graham Lamont. <laughs> Always. <laughs> but he has uh, some quoted words in here from uh, Gosho's. We've read, and you know, I love me. I love to to find different translations of the same document because it's so illuminating how cultural biases and language biases manipulate the same information. But it's also most fascinating how the meaning, if you look past the words, the meaning just, just bubbles right out. Yeah. Uh, there was one word I, I saw in here that I had to look up and I found really fascinating. What was it? Tamashi. You know how uh, how vehement I am. Uh, there it is, tamashi, just like that. <laughs> um, 
it's obviously a word that comes from the Japanese writing of Nichiren's Gosho. And it's just so quickly translated by those trying to appeal to Western mind as soul. But there is no soul. I mean, this is one of the primary things that Shakyamuni taught 3,000 years ago. Stop thinking magical, mystical. That's just baloney. What do I say all the time? There is no bag of Bob or box of Betty or silo of Sylvain. There's no... When I go extinct, when this body dies, then there's nothing to instantiate that sentient mind. Whatever I am as a thinking sentient being, it's over. There's no like residual little, eh, there's Sylvain floating off into the universe. Yeah. Grow up. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Really, look at it on its face. How, and yet it's just reinforced constantly. <sighs> but I looked up Tamashi. And yes, it's an English dictionary, so it shows that soul is one of those ways of describing this Japanese word, but so is ghost. So is anima, which I found the most interesting, because that goes back to ancient Greek. What animates us? Ah, wait a minute. A much greater opportunity for understanding in that one. There's other words too, but Tamashi. It isn't about soul. That's a very polluted Western term, polluted greatly by the world's religions, which make way too much out of that. And that's their anchor to draw you into la la land. What animates us. What do we talk about all the time? What does Shakyamuni talk about? What does Nietzsche talk about? The energy, the formations of the instantiation of potential happening moment to moment to moment to moment. That's what animates. What is animation? Another way to say it is momentum. What is it a momentum of? This instantiate, this formations of energy, potential, into forms, expression of energy. Oh, that's not mystical at all. That's the engine of life. That doesn't have a personal ownership. See, that's the, the greatest fallacy of the word soul, is it implies that you own something. That something about you is permanent. These are all counter to everything Shakyamuni taught about Buddhism. You've got to get your head around being in the momentum, the energy, the kinetics of energy, that you're an instantiation of that kinetics and you just happen to have this facility to witness it. How amazing! That's why this life is so precious with this sentient mind. Wow, look what's happening. And as soon as it's no longer happening, you're no longer a witness. There's no you, because the you, self, illusion. It's a provisional illusion. It's a, a tool we use to get around in samsara. But that's all it is. There's nothing magical about it. It's precious, not magic. It's precious. It's something to deeply appreciate every time we chant and move into the world of samsara. We need to be cognizant of how amazing that is. How wonderful the lotus, the wonderful law. That's Buddhism. Some faint eternal, quote-unquote, self? How, how utterly insulting to Buddhist thought, teaching. So yeah, 
I, I absolutely abhor it when I see that word popping up in translations because it confuses everybody. Tamashi. Perhaps that's what I should do. Every book that I have in the bookstore, you know, I've been cleansing it as best as I can of this cultural language bias. And I don't get it all, but I get a good amount of it. So you can understand Buddhism correctly. Maybe I should replace everything I see. You know, I've replaced it with essence. That's a translation of tamashi also. But maybe just use the word tamashi. Maybe that's what I should do. Anyway, all of that's to point out that there's a lot of that kind of rhetoric in this book. And it's upsetting. But it's a talk on Nichiren Shonen's object of worship. We've talked about that already, right? Object. The object of worship is Gohonzon, not that mandala. And that object, Gohonzon, ain't physical. It's an aspect of mind. So I recoil at that statement, object of worship. It's more like an objective of awakening. <laughs> but this mandala, great mandala, is the ultimate samsaric tool to focus all of our eight consciousness, our samsaric eight consciousnesses, our momentum of karma, and <laughs> pinpoint it on that Gohonzon mind, that source of knowing, witnessing the momentum, Buddhaness. That's an objective. That's a, a direction to go. That's something to accomplish. The word objects, it's just far too easy to associate it with a material thing, which itself is retardation. It's throwing an anchor down. It's in the past. So, not a good... But it's in everything, isn't it? Object of worship. So yeah, that's another one that's very misleading. And that's why people think that that mandala is the Gohonzon. <laughs> How many times has Nichiren said, no, 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 no. Shakyamuni said, it. The go Hanzon. Shakyamuni didn't talk about that because he didn't use that word. He talked about enlightenment as a mental condition, a mental awareness, a clarity of understanding the momentum, the engine of life. Nichiren put a word to it Tendai put a word to it, but Nichiren especially. But he didn't call that thing behind me a Gohonzon. Only these manipulators and bad teachers have done that. He's always referred to that as a mandala. A mandala, by definition, is an object of focus to mentally shift yourself. So, if we can enter this new, this, uh, this book, new, it's not new, to talk about Gohonzon and the mandala, maybe it has some value that way. I've read parts of it, not the whole thing. I keep stumbling over the rhetoric. But it might be a, a good conversation. You know what? Tell me, I really look forward to you saying something about this in the comments or if it's something personal you want to say you don't want to put in the in the live forum as it is of the comments email me tlksylvain at gmail.com yeah let me know your thoughts I, I yeah this is about helping all of us helping you have greater conviction and understanding in your practice confidence right 
maybe I can find, I'm going to look around some more in my library and see what else. I mean, you know, Nietzsche wrote entire go shows about Gohonzon, the objective of worship. Of worship? See, I'm quoting writings. I would never say that. Because we don't worship like something is going to imbue us with presence. Right? Buddhahood is inherent. We're not worshiping anything. We're instantiating it. We already have this facility. We don't pray. We don't worship. I did a whole video on that. Look for it in the search bar of the homepage of this channel. Worship. You'll get the videos. We don't worship. We instantiate. We invoke. Right? We engage the engine of life. We don't wait for it to help, help. Namo Myoren Geiko. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Like and subscribe. If you can, Patreon, PayPal, help support the whole resource. These videos, the podcast, the website, the bookstore, the mandala store. Yeah? Namo Myoren Geiko. Thank you. Please take care of your health. Be kind. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Yo! Oh.